welcome to this edition of The Simsbury Woman. My name is Shannon Nall. Thank you so much for joining us as we recognize another Simsbury woman making a difference in our community. Today we're going to be speaking with Barbara Kaler, and I'm Hi. so happy to have you here today. I'm very happy to be here. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. I think we will have a lively conversation about um, all of what you do in town. I know you're an active volunteer in the community as well, but I, I, today I want to focus on you as a businesswoman, first of all. So let's back up. Uh, talk a little bit about what what brought you to Simsbury. How did you find our town? Well, I grew up in New York, um, in Westchester County, New York, and um, loved it there. And after college, um, I went to New York City, did the obligatory New York City rat race thing for four years, um, and got burnt out at the ripe age of 22. You know, <laughs> <The best. laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, worked really hard, um, and my brother had made his way down south and just loved Atlanta and kept trying to get me down there. So I went to Atlanta um, after New York and he was in real estate. Mm -hmm. So that sort of was my introduction to real estate and um, worked at Remax there. And at that time I met my husband, Charlie, who was a realtor at Remax as well. And we had the office romance and, and had a lot of fun down there, but the congestion and the, the, uh, the schooling and it wasn't a place for the next chapters in our lives. Right. Um, so we did a lot of research, we did a lot of traveling, and of all places we chose, we moved to Salt Lake City, Utah. Wow. Yes, and, and we had, you know, we both had very successful careers in real estate. Charlie was a top agent, and I um, actually did a closing coordination service in the largest Remax office in the world at the time, um, where I took care of all the details of all the transactions and very administrative uh, parts. So, and he was one of my clients. But we ended up moving to Salt Lake City with no jobs, with very little money. Um, we figured if we're going to do it, now's the time to do it. Absolutely. And our family thought we were crazy. Our friends thought we were crazy. Um, I thought we were crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I just sort of But went you with did it. it anyway. I did it anyway. We had just come out of the Olympics in Atlanta. Uh -huh. The Olympics were coming to Salt Lake City. Uh -huh. uh, it's, a, it's an amazing place. It really is an amazing place. And we ended up getting married out in Salt Lake City and having both kids there. Um, we, of course, couldn't just start a lucrative real estate career there instantly um, right. and pay the mortgage. So Charlie was involved in uh, as a director of a school out there, um, one of those small career college vocational schools, and um, and I would go out and help him volunteer, you know, pregnant and uh, doing a lot of high school recruiting and, and marketing around the school, and. As we got pregnant with the second child, you know, it hit me like a ton of bricks. Okay, is this going to be our home forever? Right. You know, um, it was super for that time. We explored. We every weekend we were going somewhere phenomenal. You know, whether it be, um, you know, Montana, California, mm -hmm. Vegas. You mm -hmm. know, we just took advantage of that. Um, but you know, something in my heart said, I have to get back to the East Coast. You were you know, looking to settle down. I was looking to more. settle down. <laughs> you know, it, now I've got my kids. I right. you know, want to find, get back to my friends, to my roots. Um, and I was really happy anywhere from Maine to Florida. I just wanted East Coast, mm -hmm. you know. And Charlie is such an easygoing guy. Um, really said, you know, just, you've got the time. You can set up some interviews for me. I'm, I'll just, you know, do whatever. So right. we sort of got busy together. And... Um, he was offered a job in the Hartford area at a school, and they said that he would have to come out for about six months of training, and they didn't know which school they were going to place mm -hmm. him in. Mm -hmm. So we knew it was sort of a temporary, you know, housing type thing. Right. And I, I swear I was eight months pregnant. He came out here for an interview, and I got this call, and he said, this is the place. Oh. He said, you, everything you've wanted that you've been talking about, the, the seasons, yep. the trees, the rolling hills, the community, um, you know, he, the, the New England classic style homes. He's like, this is it, Barbara, you're gonna, you're gonna love it. I, I couldn't travel because I was in my third right. trimester. Um, so I was, I was very excited about it. Excellent. And we literally, um, the day the doctor said that my baby at nine days was able to fly in a plane. Wow. Uh, I got on the plane, my son was nine months old. My, uh, pardon me, my daughter was nine months, my son was nine days. Oh um, we flew we flew here, Charlie took the U-Haul, and we met at the uh, uh, Days Inn at the airport. 
literally with nowhere to move. Oh my gosh. And to, I found Simsbury, opened the yellow pages, and started going through apartment complexes, oh I gosh. swear, uh, to find out who would take pets. And we ended up at the um, next to the Gibbs Mobile Station at the Udoff property there. Oh my gosh. So that's how we found Simsbury. That's it was literally nothing much planned, not a lot of research. Um, it's just opening a phone book, and that's a crazy story. Wow, that is a crazy story. But now you've <laughs> dug in your roots here. Oh, yes. So you have your family here. You have your business here. Um, you are you know, a successful real estate agent with Remax in town. Mm -hmm. And I just want to talk a little bit about um, that experience because now you're balancing um, business ownership, yes. a career, and a family. And we were talking a little bit off camera about how you navigate all that. You have to, you really have to set your priorities and, and let that dictate um, your career path. And that seems to be what, what you have done. Yes. Um, Charlie and I own the Remax in town. We, we sort of believe in, in simplifying your life, you know. And we, we bought the franchise. Um, it's, it's just the, the couple people in there and the mortgage broker um, so that we can be there at our kids' school plays mm -hmm. and um, you know Charlie and I both it's it's a great career because we're very involved in the community that's yes, part of are. our job mm -hmm. and it's fun and it's who we are you know inside so um, I do a lot in the schools mm -hmm. I volunteer at the front desk at the reception at Squadron Line Elementary School I just love that I mm -hmm. get to see all the kids I get to know the administration there and I love them all um, and I'm doing the school play I'm uh, the chairperson for the school play when, I, when we first moved here in the apartments, you know, I, wh what was funny was that Charlie was then, then told he was going to be working down in Brantford, mm -hmm. which is an hour and 15 minutes from here. Wow. So we were actually going to move that way. Mm -hmm. But in the time that he was doing through all that training, I was involved in the Mothers of Preschoolers. I was involved in the, um, the Newcomers Club and, um, and going to the library and doing right. the children's programs. And I had already started my roots here so when he said we had to right. get up and move you know we sort of thought wait a minute he's do <laughs> I like my job more than I like Simsbury right. and the answer was no hmm. so that's when we decided to get back into real estate and and get involved in the community now Charlie is well, while I do most with the children and volunteer work and the moms in the community he's very involved in the rotary mm -hmm. which has been an amazing um, mm -hmm. journey for him he's met so many wonderful people and and done things he never would have done mm -hmm. otherwise and he also has gotten involved with the senior center mm -hmm. and he's just taken over the role of doing um, the, the odd tasks that seniors can't do themselves they sort of call this number and Charlie arranges or takes care of sweeping out a garage or mm -hmm. cleaning an attic for these people so um, we're different sides of the, right. the spectrum there, but it's and it's all networking and getting out and learning right. more about the community, which right. makes it so easy to sell. Well, that that is actually one of my questions for you: is that what you saw in Simsbury is certainly something that you can convey to others who are considering the area. So, what are what are some of the things that that you say? I mean, I yeah. look around our town, and you talked about the rolling hills and the yes. um, beautiful landscape and the downtown area, right? I think what, Charlie and I were talking about this recently, um, how involved the, f the parents and the families are in their children. Um, we volunteered the other day at to chaperone a ski club. Mm -hmm. There were 17 parents there mm -hmm. volunteering for a ski club. I mean, that's just amazing the way that they jump in and help. And, you know, for instance, this drama club, we have 12 men and women parents who are, are helping. You go to a soccer game and right. and a football game. Right. They're, the, they're involved. They're there. They're part of these children's lives. And, you know, everyone says the schools are so great. And, of course, they are. But the parents are so great. Mm -hmm. The families, they have their priorities straight, which mm -hmm. we spoke about earlier. Right. Um, and I think that Charlie and I absolutely have our priorities straight. And oh, we yes. could work a lot more. And real estate could never end, right? You know, but we set parameters, and it makes us happier. It makes us better realtors. Mm -hmm. It makes us better parents, and absolutely. and of course better partners. Yeah, absolutely. And it took us years to figure this out. Well, this is not something <laughs> that happens overnight. I, yes. I think experience lends itself to many decisions. That's um, for sure. <laughs> but let's talk a little bit about the real estate, uh, the residential real estate market in Simsbury. Yes. You know, we've all been living through this kind of economic 
yeah. downturn and now things are starting to come we're starting to come out of that Absolutely. how has that um, translated to what we've seen in Simsbury over the last you know five to seven years yes well it's funny when we were living in our little apartment on Hot Meadow Street I can remember exactly what the market was like because we um, went out bought a house within probably 30 minutes of it hitting the market we paid full price we had a no doc loan we had very little income you know, 100% financing. We bought it um, with no inspections. Hmm. And, and we as realtors were doing right. this. Right. You know, so <laughs> hmm. as is, um, it, it was a crazy, wild market. Unreal. Yeah. It was unreal um, and not necessarily healthy. Right. Um, as realtors, it was hard to be a, a realtor in that market right. because you were giving more disappointing news than anything else. Mm -hmm. um, of course, loan, the loan business was, is, was, like I said, we had very little income, no doc loan, 100% financing. That, that couldn't happen <laughs> for, for a moment in this day. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, the market was, was wild then. Um, I think in terms of Simsbury versus the nation, the trends, we're always a little bit behind um, a, a slower like they're rebounding now and we're just a little slower in mm -hmm. everything we do, which is fine because our extremes are a lot less. Uh, you know, well, you're, right. we're not going to have the 50% drop in our home values, whereas you may find that in other areas. We're, we might have like a 10%, 20% drop where, where you'll see 50% drop. So we're just a little behind the trend, but absolutely going in the same direction. Now, why, why is that, that we are a little bit behind? Not that it's a bad thing, like you said. Well, I think because we don't have the extremes. Okay. You know, okay. so I think that um, there's just not a lot of extremes in terms of the, the metropolitan cities Got and the, the, the luxury markets and right. the, um, the leisure markets. Those right. you're going to see a lot more extremes because mm -hmm. there's more moving in and out of. Mm -hmm. So, but you're seeing that we are starting to. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, January has been a really great month for us. A lot of listings we've had that have been sitting. Um, you know, funny, funny situations where we've had these beautiful pools and all through the summer and we finally closed the pool and it's got a sloped driveway with, oh, the snow. We get a contract as soon as the pool's closed and it snows. You know, you right. just, the market's funny. And, and you think about the spring market's the best time to sell and the best time to buy, but there's so much more inventory then. The winter market definitely has a lot of value to mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. So it just, you know, people who are buying in the winter need to buy a house. Well, that's what it comes down to. Right. If you need to buy a house, it doesn't matter what, yeah. what the season is. So um, I, I want to talk a little bit about um, Simsbury was recently recognized for being the best value for uh, in a price range from 200000 to 299000 okay. I believe. So is that is that what you're seeing in the market? Is that really where well, the... That's, that's a great market in Simsbury mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. sure. Um, one thing is that there's a lot of inventory. So mm -hmm. it's if you're a home buyer coming in in that price point you know even in the dead of winter you're going to find 15 20 homes to choose from right and that's a very healthy market you know it's going to keep the sellers really keeping their homes in cosmetically in good condition you ma maintain the homes you know it's not like the old times back when you could you know buy see see through the the thick plush pink carpet and the you know, it just keeps the market very healthy. Yeah, that's uh, and that's kind of what we want for our community as Absolutely. well. We want people to be invested in their properties and to be caring for their properties. That that serves everyone well. Absolutely. Hmm. Um, you know, the, the other interesting thing that I find about Simsbury, and everyone will recognize this, is that it's a very diverse community as far as uh, economically diverse community. Yes. So, so housing is kind of all over the all over the board, I Absolutely. would imagine. So how do you, how are you, how do you address that in, in, in your business? Well, there's so many options available. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've just got these beautiful new temporary housing going up, um, the King's Ridge behind right. in Weetog, behind the Dunkin' Donuts, the Mills Common. So you've got your, you've got your luxury rentals, you've got your non-luxury rentals, so there's plenty of temporary housing. Mm -hmm. Um, and you've got a whole gamut of price points mm -hmm. um, from extreme, you know, well over a million. Um, right. And, and then these small condos. So if someone wants to live in Simsbury, there's an option for mm -hmm. them, without a doubt. And I think, you know, not only is the their economic diversity, but we're talking about young families. We're talking about um, seniors, yes. you know, people who 
embrace every aspect of, of life. Or yeah, certainly. As a matter of fact, um, you know, I do believe that there are many seniors downsizing into these luxury apartments. Right. Um, you know, I, I happen to know the owner of the, the Kings Ridge, and that's sort of the demographic he believes is, is coming mm -hmm. in there, are the people who are downsizing but want to stay near their grandchildren or in their community. You know, it's such a great senior center. Well, right. And they still want to be involved. Right. And, and they can get some nice properties. Interesting. And now what about, um, I always have to ask about this because I grew up in the area, moved away, and then came back. Oh, there's a lot of that. That's, <laughs> that's There's wonderful. a lot of that. We have, many of our clients have been through the Simsbury School Districts here as children. Oh, this is my school. This is, I'd love for my kids to go to where I went. And they, they needed to get away mm -hmm. to appreciate what they, what they have here. Mm -hmm. And I, I can completely understand that. Right. I'd love to hear that. That's so refreshing yeah. because I think we need that to keep the community vibrant is we need to kind of have that circle, yes. you know, co coming back around. Um, now this is kind of a, not anyone's favorite subject, but taxes. Okay. <laughs> taxes. Yeah. Um, is that daunting? Is that something it's, that you come it's across? It's hard for someone from coming out of state to mm -hmm. when they when they ask that question, wait a minute, <laughs> these right. are the taxes on this house? Right. Um, and and you, you really have to have them decide if this is the community they want to live in and what are they getting for these taxes. Mm -hmm. And um, for us, it's absolutely a decision we made. Mm -hmm. And that's just part of being in this community. And, right. and clearly a lot of people have made the same decision. Right. Um, yeah, we'd like to keep them down and we don't want them to get any higher. Right. Um, but we do see the value in, in what the community is giving us yeah. in return. Well, I think that's important. I think that's, it. you know, where, wherever you are, you obviously want to be um, assured that your, your dollar is being well spent. So um, <clears throat> I think that's an important point to make. Um, and I think we hear so much lately about Connecticut and what a difficult commercial and therefore residential climate yes. Connecticut has. So are you seeing that or are you, are you seeing? I, I haven't seen a lot of change in the 10 years we've been living hmm. here with um, people wanting to, to leave the state because of that, mm -hmm. um, because of the, the cost of living and the taxes. Um, I think it's you sort of know what you're getting into. Yes. I mean, that's just the way I've always felt about Connecticut, living yes. in New York, knowing since a child that Connecticut had high taxes and that it was an expensive place to live, I still wanted to live there. I know. <laughs> you know, I did as a kid. Right. I always wanted to live in Connecticut. Right. It was just, you know, you know it. Well, again, like you said, you know what you're, you're, you're getting into. And, and this is, you know, we have a beautiful state. We have a beautiful town. This is... We this really is, do, and the, right. there's the, the different seasons. You can we've got skiing 20 minutes from our doorstep. Right. You know we've got the river, we've got the the, the, the seasons, and of course, Boston and New York are so close, right. but not close, not too close. Right. Not Again, too close. We, we can have the simple life and and still enjoy everything that that one would want. Um, exactly. Yes, I I think also the more involved you get in your community, the more you see where your taxes are going. Mm -hmm. um, you can help decide where that money's going. Mm -hmm. um, so. It is what it is, mm -hmm. in yeah. my opinion. That's just the way I was sort of brought up. Right. Well, I think that that, um, you know, that's certainly something that I, I think that is shared. That's a shared feeling in, in our town right. and in our state. I, you know, I pretty much grew up in Connecticut, so I'm well aware of what you're, you're speaking of. Um, and that, I think it's refreshing to hear from someone who's in the trenches, as you are, that, um, you know, we understand what the economic situation right. is, both in the state and in, in, the, in the country. It's refreshing to hear that it's, you know, that we're steadily coming back and that Absolutely. there is there is movement and it's not gloom and doom as it, as it had been for right. a few right. years. So right. it, it's, it's nice to hear that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. No, houses are moving and um, it's, it's a very healthy market mm -hmm. right now. I mean, probably about an average of 90 days on the market, which is a very wow. healthy, you have time to negotiate. As a realtor, it's great. We can, we can negotiate for our clients. We can guide our sellers on how to market your house and make it look better than others and mm -hmm. make it a better value. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, as, as a real estate agent, this is a great market because it keeps us very busy. Right. Well, <laughs> I, and I'm thinking of when, when my husband and I moved to town, you know, over 10 years ago, 
there was a bidding war yes on our house and things yes. just happened like that that's exactly and before you can even process what's going on yeah but sometimes before you get out of the car it, right it's already sold and you didn't know about it you know it's it's it was a very it wasn't a fun market i think for anyone well and i like the way that you describe it as uh, markets as healthy um yes. i think healthy is sustainable which is yes which is what we're looking for as well right that's right so when the um real estate market is like i said over 10 years ago when it was frantic and and yeah. Crazy. Is that what is that reflective of? Is that a reflection of the economy as well? Oh, or absolutely. It, mm. The economy, and and of course, people were able to get money very easily back then. Right. That right. wasn't a blip on the radar. Is how are we going to afford this house? It was more like, what house do we want? Right. You know, and that was that was a scary time. We didn't know it. We were right. all living it. Right. You know. Well, now let's talk about that a little bit because we kind of alluded to it at the beginning of the conversation about um, loans and, and banking situations. Yeah. Things are very different, like oh. you said. Well, the appraisals are very scrutinized and looked over, and, and many times um, are not homes are not appraising at what people think they can sell for. Hmm. We're having that happen this week, where the house is not going to. It did not appraise, so now we have to take an, you know, other actions and see if we have to renegotiate the price or, or see whether or not the buyer wants to continue. <coughs> so the hmm. banks are very, very um, strict on appraisals. And that's got to be an, an interesting conversation to be having with clients. Yes. Buyers and sellers. Right. Because you don't want to be a buyer and not have the house appraised because you're like, wait a minute. But at the same time, not all your appraisers are local. They mm -hmm. don't understand the value of perhaps a certain street. Okay. And that's, that's, a very unfortunate situation where we realtors have our hands tied. Mm -hmm. They don't understand, you know, the value of maybe an in-town property, or they just see a four-bedroom colonial and they're comparing it to another four-bedroom colonial four miles away or three miles away um, that doesn't have the same value um, from other reasons beyond what's on paper. Right. And that that becomes hard. Right. So in that respect, we like to work locally. Of course. Uh, with local <laughs> banks that understand. The value of Simsbury, mm -hmm. you know, but but it's not always something we can. It's never something we can choose, really. Well, right, and I, and I, <laughs> I, I understand what you're saying. I mean, so living in, in downtown with access to the downtown community is a very different scenario than living a little bit further out Absolutely. on a cul-de-sac. Exactly. So um, that's an interesting perspective. So when you are using um, inspectors and and everything like that, you're using local. Well, we we absolutely we we've been brought up as realtors to to give three names, mm -hmm. you know, to give a variety, certainly mm -hmm. don't, you know, appoint an inspector, mm -hmm. but absolutely it's so much easier when you've got someone that you've got a relationship with, um, you understand, you know, some inspectors will go in and, and they've just got a scare mentality. They come in and, oh my oh. goodness, there's a leak in the roof, you know, and, and it, it's the way they address, the, they, you know, they introduce the problem versus other ones that may say this could be a result of this and these are different ways to fix it. Okay. You know, so you definitely want Right. And it the, the problem the, the situation is what the second inspector said, this is the problem, this is the solution. Um, so you want to work with the people that that have that business savvy that understand exactly. And then that kind of speaks to the whole industry, I would imagine, is yes. that you right. have to have that flexibility, that willingness to, or the ability to change at a moment's notice or oh, yes. to realize how, you know, nothing is unsolvable, I guess. That's right. And, and that's, I think, why my husband has been so successful is he's such a, an easygoing, non-alarmist, you know, person. And when it comes to business, working with other agents, you know, it's never a crisis. Mm -hmm. You know, there's always an answer or a solution. Mm -hmm. um, so I do... And I, I admire from that personally and professionally. Right. Well, Thank that's, goodness. I know. I think we could all use a little bit of that. <laughs> exactly. So that's refreshing yes. to hear. Yes. Um, we're going to start wrapping up in a few minutes, but I just wanted to see if you have any parting words of wisdom for people who are out there either buying or selling right now. Well, I think, again, with, our, with this market, there's time. There's time so buyers can absolutely find the, the exact home that they've been looking for, whereas you know, 10 years ago, there, there wasn't time, you know, you, you, you bought what you, what you could get right. your hands on. Take your time, do your research, see a lot of inventory. Um, you know, it's hard to look beyond the cosmetics and 
from that perspective, I advise buyers to try and do that. But on the other side, I advise sellers to know that they to take an extra five thousand to prepare your house to sell will make you a good thirty thousand dollars later. Mm -hmm. You know, get rid of the wallpaper, paint the right. trim, mm -hmm. get rid of the popcorn, put in some new cabinetry. Or cabinets can get expensive. You can, you know, paint those, but put in some granite. It will make your house more valuable than others, mm -hmm. and you'll get more money out of mm -hmm. it. You and know. staging. Right? Well, staging, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I mean, we all watch enough HGTV. Oh, but my gosh. staging can yes. absolutely, the clutter, we, you know, myself included, you don't see the clutter in your no. own home. It builds and it builds and it builds. You know, the, the, the rule we always say is shelves should be half empty. Mm -hmm. um, all of your kitchen drawers, half empty. Put it in storage. When you're showing a house, everything should be half empty. <laughs> that is good advice. What yes. is the, just quickly, what is the main selling point of, of any house? What sells a house first? Oh boy, well, you know, of course, location. Okay. Location, location, location. location. And Simsbury is the location to be. Okay. <laughs> good to hear. All right, Barbara, I want to thank you so much thank for you. being with us, here with us today and sharing a little bit about yourself and your, yes. your career in Simsbury and and what you do in town with, with your husband and a, a real estate partnership. We appreciate that and all the tips that you gave us about buying and selling a house. It's, and it's good to hear that the economy is back on track and yes. the business is, is back on track as well. So good to hear. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here with us. And thank you for joining us for um, another edition of The Simsbury Woman. We look forward to seeing you soon. Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.